This amazing video has been brought to you by Bleed, Steam, and Steel by Lars Jensen. This novel is packed full of romance, intrigue, violence, and steampunk goodness. And if you're looking for your new best girl, then look no further. If you're interested, please check out the link down below, and on with the video. Hello there everyone, Lars here with another D&D take on writing, brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel by novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And today I want to talk about food and D&D. Yeah, I know, I've already talked about this before in the past, using scenes with food as well as scenes with the bathroom in order to provide levity, character development, context, all these different kinds of things. I've even released in the past a really odd, bizarre take on food and the holiday and just taking a break. But in this particular instance, I want to talk about how you can use the experience of playing Dungeons and Dragons to communicate food within a story and how that can be used to enhance scenes and world building. Now, I once heard of a fantastic story when it came to D&D, where the players had, had gone out on these several quests to do these amazing feats and to especially acquire ingredients. These ingredients were then brought on over back to this place where the or the players would then create these magnificent dishes that the dungeon master herself then actually prepared. So the dungeon master had actually gone out of her way to make basically a three or four course meal based on the ideas that the players had come up with. She brought them on out and they role played what it was like to enjoy this food and be part of a competition and all these kinds of things. And they all lauded this particular game as one of the most immersive and enjoyable experiences and it's always enjoyable when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and there's a ton of food you get to eat and you're just hanging out with friends it's always a great time it's one of the things that's so great about playing D&D is the camaraderie that you can have at the table with your friends or with people that you've just met as you share food food is one of those things that really brings people together and that should be something that you take into account when you write that honestly a lot of scenes where people come together in kind of like meaningful ways to have good conversations get to know each other and so forth are usually done over food and it's because food is something that we can all usually agree on sure we might have different tastes we might have different favorite meals different things that we don't want to eat but at the end of the day we all need to eat and we can all usually agree on things that are pretty enjoyable to have so this is yet another reason why writing scenes or having moments in D&D &D where you are coming together over food can actually be very very helpful because food brings people together and it gives you a chance to explore characters as they are well forced to sit with each other and interact and have conversations over food. It can be conversations about the food or conversations about themselves or anything around. It doesn't matter. Food is the nexus that brings them together. Now, what can you actually do in D&D with food that will be enjoyable for the players and that could potentially translate on over to writing? Well, some ideas that I have are, are these. Number one, <laughs> one of the very typical ways to begin a campaign is you're at a tavern and people are talking with each other and yada, yada, yada. Use that as a moment to already have the players get to know each other by the food that they order and encourage that a little bit as the dungeon master. So it's like, what do you want to order? Like how yeah, you, you play the NPC of a waiter or waitress. So darling, what will it be? And the players are like, bring me some ale. No, oh, and then you're like, well, would you like the strong or the weak? And then immediately already you begin, people begin to communicate certain aspects of their character by saying, I'll take the weak ale, or I'll take the strong ale, or I'll take the very fine aged wick whiskey. Whatever it be, it already then communicates to the other players, oh, this character either can't hold their liquor, or this character's a hard drinker, this character might not even drink alcohol. And suddenly it's like, you get to know a little bit more about the character. Well, what kind of food would you like, darling? We have special roast. Well, I'm a vegetarian. The rest of the table looks at them aghast. <gasps> You're adventuring and you're a vegetarian? Well, there's tons of leaves and everything everywhere. Why would I not eat that? The world is our own bounty. 
and then use the dungeon master like <clears throat> i'm going to send you guys into a desert in any case there is so much you can discover about the characters and have them reveal about themselves all in the very first meeting by the food that they order and in one of the campaigns that I'm playing with Nathan and Scott, when we had that typical meeting in the tavern, one of the things that we got to do was we were talking about like, well, okay, so like, here's here's my character. Right? One of my characters loves to enjoy very fanciful meals. The other one's a little bit more austere, who's not going to eat quite as much. Others are way more adventurous in the kinds of food that they decide to buy. Maybe they're trying to flirt a little bit with the waitress as she is taking their order. All of these things, once again, help to show aspects of a character that you don't get as you're just marching along through the world and fighting monsters because you don't need to necessarily bring out those aspects of your character when in combat or in travel. They're aspects, way softer aspects of a personality that come out over food that ultimately just help the character to become more well-rounded and help to introduce a character's personality and some of their traits right off the bat. And that way then you can already start establishing good strong relationships in game from the get-go. And again, this is something that you can actually do really well in stories. One, one good example is actually in the first Mistborn book, where when Vin meets Kelsier and the crew, well, they meet around wine. And you can already tell a lot about these characters based on who's drinking the wine, how much they're drinking, and, and everything like that. You can tell who enjoys themselves, who is reserved, uh, who is suspicious. Vin is not going to really drink anything because she's afraid that someone has laced her drink with something. And everyone else is either drinking freely or drinking very little, which says, okay, Docs is a reserved character who is keeps himself under control. Kelsier is very much a devil may care kind of attitude, so he's drinking pretty freely from the wine. You then have someone like Breeze, who is acting very sophisticated as he drinks his wine, and then you then have someone like Ham, who looks like a brawler, someone who would just chug as much alcohol as he would want, but he is also very careful with how he handles himself. So you learn a lot about these characters just by observing their drinking habits when they all first meet. Another great thing that you can do with food in D&D is highlight what makes a region special. And this is something that we see in real life. You go from place to place to place, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world, different regions, different areas of any country are going to have different types of cuisine, different meals that they really pride themselves on. And this is something that you can bring out in your Dungeons & Dragons game by experimenting a little bit with what different regions serve. So sure, you go from tavern to tavern to tavern, but they're not all going to serve the same old ale and beer. They're not all going to serve the same pork roast. They're going to have different kinds of cuisine. And this is a way that as the Dungeon Master, you can really stretch yourself and allow yourself to enjoy just some really fun world building through food. And as a writer, this is another great way to express your world through food. How does going from place to place to place really change the food that you eat? And this is something that you can mark within a story. That if a story that involves a lot of travel doesn't have any real variety in food, well, for one thing, it makes the culture of the story way more homogenous. It doesn't necessarily make it less entertaining or less engaging, but it lacks a certain amount of variety that keeps the story feeling very much alive. And it's a fun little aspect that just makes the overall experience way more enjoyable to the reader and way more enjoyable to your players when you are doing D&D. And just like as I gave earlier with the example of the players and the Dungeon Master who had this massive meal and actually acted it out, while that would be really fun to do in any D&D experience, it might not be for everyone right there. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't allow your players to have some fun in actually engaging in making their own meals. And this is something that in, once again, in another campaign that I've been playing, we've actually been doing, and it's led to some great character interactions where you've got one player's like, I really want to make a fantastic soup. 
and they're really good at foraging and everything, but they don't have everything necessary to make a good soup. Well, my character is a ranger, so I go out, I do some hunting, I come back, and I add some stuff to the stew, and it just becomes really great because now we've got two characters. One character who is very proud of his stews is, and then accepting help from another character, and it provides some fun dialogue moments, a little bit of ribbing, a little bit of getting to know each other. And as we talk about how we are making this food, it just makes the experience feel all the more engaging and just fulfilling for the players because we get a chance to actually interact. And that's once again a big thing about food. Food allows for people to interact with each other as they're enjoying or not enjoying their meal. You can also have it where people don't enjoy their meal and they go on and on and complaining about it. It would be really hilarious to see that play out. So whether it's them enjoying their meal or not enjoying their meal, you get a lot of really great interaction. So you will want to, if you're the dungeon master, encourage your characters to engage each other in the meal and about and around the meal. And this is something that once again, you can easily do as a writer. And I've once done this with a really hilarious scene where a whole bunch of characters are being introduced to pizza for the first time. How the different characters interacted with pizza and what they enjoyed and didn't enjoy about it tells a lot about their personalities and it was a great chance for them to get to know each other. What made it also really great is that it's a bunch of villains eating pizza and pizza is usually that thing you're like oh look at this the friends and family are going out and enjoying some stuffed crust or some deep dish or just some regular pepperoni and cheese pizza no in this case you have a bunch of villains debating with each other about whether or not pineapple should belong on pizza it's one of the best scenes that i have ever written or i can't actually say it's one of the best scenes i've ever written because well yeah it it actually technically isn't but it was one of the most fun scenes that i have ever written just because it was hilarious to write five different perspectives of villains talking about whether or not pineapple belongs on pizza and why because some of them are like it's evil and others are like it's delicious and others are like it's disgusting and others are saying it's unnatural ah uh, I loved writing that scene, and it's a scene that could very easily play out in Dungeons & Dragons, giving you, as an author, way more inspiration for how you'd want your own characters to interact. So hopefully this video gives you some ideas of what you can do in Dungeons & Dragons, as well as what you can do in your own writing when it comes to setting up good character moments. Food brings people together one way or another, and so you should definitely utilize that as a device in your games and in your stories to pull out character development. It doesn't have to be big character development, but rather establishing who these people are, their finer tastes, the softer aspects of their personality, and so forth. Things that you normally wouldn't get through just merely adventuring and fighting. That is the power of food. So that will do it for this video. If you'd like more writing advice, please go check out our podcast, Camille's Harem, or check out our other videos here on YouTube. We've got tons of them, all chock full of great writing advice, insights, theories, and so forth. And if you are a writer looking to challenge yourself, we've got some challenges for you over at our Pinterest page. And we would love for you to join us over at our Discord and our subreddit for all kinds of discussions, sharing our stories, and just getting to know and support other authors out there who are doing their best to write their amazing stories. It is an adventure that is way more fun with friends. So I thank you all for joining us on this little video right here. And until the next one, y'all, choose.